uh, some projects have more money involved so there's more food on set or there's more comfort or there's more chairs or something and you get looked after slightly better but when you come down to the basics it's very similar and I, I like television because it goes fast. I like that. I don't want to sit around for 10 hours to do one minute of film. But in films, it's very often that you have to have a lot of energy and you've got to keep it together so that by the time you get around to doing your scene, they're not exhausted and snoring on the, in the caravan, you know? <laughs> to find a way to keep your energy up. And um, I used to be incredibly chatty with everybody. I was just talking to the crew. I was like the best friend of the crew. I was loving everybody and adoring, great fun. And I'd get to the, they'd say, Jacqueline, you know, it's time to do your close up. And I'd say, I'm so tired. <laughs> Just, and I learned gradually. I learned, somebody said to me, when you're not working, go to your trailer. And I said, do what? I'm by myself in my trailer. Just rest, conserve your energy. So I'm not good at that, not good at conserving my energy. I'd like to be on the set. It was well on the set, you're wearing yourself out. You're giving too much, just, you've got to just hold on to some energy. And I, it took me a long time to kind of got that, to get that. So that it's st you're still tired at the end of the day because you're kind of lonely and bored in the trailer. You know what I mean? Unless you yes. So it doesn't, it's not easy to, con con and it, but you, you know, in a lot of shows you're, minimum 12 hours a day and sometimes 14 or maybe more. Yeah, they're definitely long days. Long days. What was it like in here and now working with Sarah Jessica Parker? Lovely. That was a two day job. She was adorable. And uh, she's, I was rather surprised that she spoke French. We did our little Frenchy bit. I was a French mother. Do you have a specific process in preparing for roles? Like, let's just take Lauren and Rose. Like, did you do anything specific to prepare for this role? I mean, it's a heavy role. Well, I didn't do anything specific, but I just spent a lot of time thinking about the character. And um, I think about the situations that they're in. There's no escaping from the situation. That's your story. You can't get away from that. You've got to do that. And, and you find yourself resisting certain things and wanting to do other things, and you realize you have fears, and you've got to face the fears. You know? And if you can sort out what it is that you've got to do that you haven't maybe done before, or something that you're worried about, and I kind of try and work through those and try and get them either contractually changed so that you don't have to do that scene, or which is very. Um, showing a lot of you that doing something you don't really want to be doing you could, you know you try and control the bits and pieces and and at a certain point you might be looking in the mirror thinking about the role and it's with me anyway it's suddenly like i suddenly say ah i get it and it comes like up my legs and it comes into me and i look and i say hmm, i know who she is and I don't know why it's from that all that time, that thought, plus the dialogue that you've got, you know, and I somehow find my way into it. Was there a particular moment with Rose where you just kind of got it? Well, it was a minute to minute thing. There were times when, or is no, you know, until you know, until I knew um, Kelly Blatt's role's focus and his essence on the set, I didn't know how I would be. But it went, started well, and it went well, basically all the way through. But it could be that it didn't. It could have happened that it didn't, but it, it, it did. So, you know, you work with the positive and you, and you try and eliminate the negative and your fears and be brave. You've got to be brave. Sometimes you have to be brave. Yeah. I mean, when I did the deep, I had to be brave because I was scared to death to be underwater. And I haven't put my head underwater since. <laughs> They asked me yesterday, had I done any swimming since? I said, no, I have not put my head underwater since that film. And that was in 1960, no, 1976, I think it was. And that's, so that's 45 years. I'm, and I, I got through that film and I got, I got braver and braver and braver. And by the end, I was just really kind of macho. <laughs> And then and that was it. You have like PTSD about going underwater now. 
well, I don't go underwater anymore. I didn't, I got through it. It was uh, so four months of, we were three months underwater and two months on land, I think it was. It was a long shoot. And um, I was nervous basically all the way through. And I, but I, the people were professional divers and professional, and they told me, they said, you were very plucky. You, I got into trouble underwater. I got into real trouble. I thought I was going to die. And um, I got through it. I did not die, but I got a real scare. And, um, you know, all these stunt things that you never know what could happen. You never know. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of going in the water or underwater personally, but that's just me. <laughs> I don't understand. Tried? I just don't understand swimming in an ocean. I mean, I, even if they say there's no sharks, it's just you can't really, <laughs> even if the water is clear, it's strange to me. It really is strange to me. That's just me. So I don't blame you. I mean, the deep looked like it, it was a scary shoot. I mean, there were underwater scenes. I'm like, this can't be fun. Well, seeing a fish holding onto your, I had the one scene when I'm underwater and I've got my little white gloves on, which you had to wear because you, things, lots of things, they stung. There was sort of coral burns and God knows what. And I'm feeding a little fish in my, and it's got its tooth right through my glove. And I'm shake, shaking my finger to get the thing off my glove. And I didn't know what, what, suddenly I felt someone nudge me from behind and I couldn't look who it was, but it was a definite nudge by from a human. And I came out, I did finish the scene and went up. And they said, wow. I said, what, wow? They said, did you see that, um, what was the name of the fish? Came through and, and it took the, took, the, took the little fish on my hand off. It, it took it and I wondered where the fish had gone, but I hadn't seen that the fish came through so fast and took that fish that I was waving around and, and was gone. And it was Nick trying to warn me that there was a big, large fish coming through. and. Oh, so I, I was oblivious. I was in my scene and I was doing my stuff. But I'm saying things can happen. I can't remember the name of that big silver fish. A shark? It wasn't a shark, no. I can't remember the name of the fish. Anyway, just an example that, you know, things can happen. And I said, what, why are you nudging me in the middle of my sea? I was on camera. He wasn't on camera. So annoyed. I wanted to go spaz off. <laughs> You're like, leave me alone, Nick. I'm filming a scene, right? You're like, leave me alone, Nick. I'm filming a leave scene. Me alone. Why are you nudging me in the middle of my scene? I'm here with my little fish and I'm doing it was a blowfish, it's very sweet little fish that had blown itself up. And it was fascinating. Wish I could remember the name of the fish that came through. A silver anyway. fish. Is there, I mean, you've worked with so many people, like, is there an actor or actress that, you know, you've wanted to work with, or you just would still love to work with that you haven't? 